just thought I'd share with you today um, how I make gaskets for uh, for engines that I, I'm re rebuilding. Uh, this is a, a lovely old a lovely old Enya 35, um, which I've just cleaned up and want to get this back together now and get it on the test stand. Um, but the uh, gaskets between the main crankcase or the main housing and this uh, forward assembly uh, have broken and are non-serviceable. There's only a gasket needed in a single location uh, where this front assembly goes onto the main crankcase or the main, main housing, um, but there were actually two gaskets fitted, um, which kind of made me wonder why. Um, I mean, the, the gaskets themselves are um, uh, that's 0 0.14 mil, uh, 0 0.23, so they're about point, 0.2 of a mil thickness. Um, the other one is of a, a, a similar thickness. Um, kind of depends where you measure them, really. So anyway, there's two gaskets on here, which kind of made me think a little. Um, and I, I just put this together um, to see how it would, would fit without a gasket. And actually you can feel this rubbing against the, uh, the back plate here um, on this main housing. The, uh, the big end that is, you can hear it. And you can see there's been a little bit of wear. I mean that could be from electric starters as well. Um, you can just see in there. Um, but I think that this probably needs uh, a decent size gasket, a decent thickness to prevent um, this touching on the back here. So, what I'm going to use to make a gasket is, normally I would use this card which is quite thin and this measures about 0 0.2, uh, 0 0.22 this is. Um, and this is just card I get from um, a, a granola, granola bar. Um, but as this only um, equates to the thickness of one gasket, I'm putting that aside and I'm actually using the box that the bars came in, which is thicker, um, which is 0.5 um, mil. So I reckon that a single gasket of that will equate to, to the two gaskets that we're on. Obviously once I've got the engine assembled, I'm going to need to check that this isn't rubbing on the back plate. Um, because obviously that's not a good thing. If it, if it is, it'll be creating possibly bits of swarf that could float around the engine and doing damage. So anyway, the main point of that is really just to say that gasket thickness is uh, often very important uh, and something that we need to consider. So I'll show you now how I um, make my gaskets. I'll just realign the camera a little bit. Okay, well the first thing I do is I need to make a, a, a print from this engine housing um, onto this card so that it can then be cut out. Um, th these are some I did a little bit earlier, uh, quite faint, um, but still clear enough that you can see um, um, where to cut. And the way I to take the print is I use um, one of these ink pads. Um, and what I've done is I've actually removed the pad itself um, and I keep that in a, a, a plastic bag. Uh, the reason I do that is because it can be quite tricky sometimes to, uh, and particularly with this engine, I'll just show you in a minute. Um, if you're using the pad actually in the tin, um, it's quite difficult to get that flat. In fact, it's nigh on impossible uh, with this um, particular job because um, the, where the gasket goes is actually flush with the, uh, the actual uh, cylinder here. So you can't do that, but you take it out and you can get that nice and square on there. I often find that less pressure with these ink pads gives you a better print. Um, and what I'll do is a number of prints and then just pick the best. So just a nice light pressure and then lots of pressure on the card. Um, okay, well that's okay, not brilliant. Let's have another go. Doing it on the edge of the table allows this uh, bit of the exhaust um, manifold 
uh, to uh, hang below the table. Now that looks a, a pretty good print. Um, let's just have a, another go. Okay, I'm going to go with that one. So, if we just give the engine manifold a wipe, just get the ink off. Right, now, put the pad away, just so I don't put my elbow on it. I mean, it's often worth doing more than one print anyway, because um, sometimes if you make a mess of cutting it out, then you can just start again. Now the first thing I'm going to do uh, with this is I'm actually going to do the holes. I'm going to cut the holes out and then the second thing I will cut out the circle and the circle I can then, before I cut out the final outside edge, I can test it on this forward housing just to check it fits. So um, what I'm going to use for the holes is this simple um, hole simple hole punch uh, with the rotating um, uh, different sizes. Now, I mean, you can use the, 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 the hammer type punches where you just hit them with a hammer, whatever works for you really. Um, so, the first thing to do is to get this on the card. Now, I find that once it's in place, it's a good idea to try and look at it from all angles and make sure that is lined up. And what I didn't do, which I should have done, is I often find that using um, a little bit of uh, card on the back of what I'm cutting, so if I, if I thicken this up by putting a, oops sorry, Thicken this up by putting a second piece of card underneath, I often get a better, a better cut. Although, in fairness, that cut quite nicely. So. Lined up. Check it from all sizes, all sides. Okay. And there we go, so we've got the two holes cut, and we'll just finish off with the other two. Right, so I now have my uh, four holes cut, and the next thing to do is um, I use a, a scalpel uh, with a brand new um, blade, so it's nice and sharp. Right. Now, I'm going to cut that out as best I can, and I'm going to do the inside circle first. I find um, that's the best way to go for me because um, once I've done that, I can, as I said earlier, I can try it on the forward housing. If it doesn't fit, there's plenty of material here, uh, of paper to be able to hold it and just trim it uh, lightly. Um, if I um, do the outside edge first, when I'm doing the inside edge, there's very little to grip, it's just a, a very thin piece, so that's, that's how I find it best. So, if you've got a really nice sharp scalpel blade, um, that should cut out quite nicely, and I will just try my best to keep my fingers out of the way of the camera. I mean, you can buy these. Uh, there's a few manufacturers around making brand new um, laser cut gaskets, but I actually quite like doing this kind of stuff myself. I, I do this hobby because I enjoy it and I enjoy doing the different stages of it. And if I was to buy everything already done, like gaskets, it kind of takes a little bit away from it for me personally. I can appreciate some people just don't necessarily have the time and just want to get get it sorted 
and I'm fully on board with that. So this is almost full circle and I find rather than trying to move the, the scalpel around as you can see I'm actually moving the um, moving the card. A bit like when you use a fret saw I suppose uh, you have a similar kind of uh, similar kind of thing. Right. So let's right well that fits but it's actually quite tight. So I may, there was an area where I could see that I was just a little bit close. Uh, if the scalpel is sharp enough, you should be able to just take a, a very thin shaving off just to smooth that out. I mean, I guess you could try and use a bit of sandpaper, but um, actually, these these sharp scalpel blades just take a lovely, a lovely shading off. Right, see what that fits like now. Yeah, that is much better. So the next thing I will do is just hold it up to the light and check that all the, uh, the screws uh, line up. I don't know whether, whether the camera can pick that up. I think it is picking it up. Um, so, there we go. Now, the next step is to um, obviously cut out the outside. Um, some of the faces on this are actually um, more or less flat, so you could do them with a ruler if you want. Um, these top faces are more or less flat, although there is just a slight dip in them. So I, I would probably do them with a scalpel. Um, similarly, you could also use a, a pair of scissors probably. But I, I just find a, a sharp scalpel just a, a lot better way to go. Um, again, I'll do this and hopefully um, I won't have my fingers in the way. I apologise if I do. Um, just sometimes it's quite difficult to get a clear view. If this turns out a little bit too big, it's always easy enough uh, to, to, to trim some off afterwards. I actually love using these uh, sharp scalpels. These are Swan Morton from, uh, from England and they are just so sharp. I mean, I use them for building balsa and everything. Or cutting balsa, should I say. And you know, it's no big deal if you make a mistake um, and you cut through uh, one of these, you just start again. It's, uh, it's only card that I would put into the recycling anyway. And for me, like I said earlier, there's a, there's a satisfaction for me that I'm actually making my own gaskets. Um, and, you know, uh, there's plenty of gasket material around if you want to buy um, proper um, engine gasket material manufactured for the job. Okay, there we go. Right, so there we have our gasket. Let me just focus on that. And we'll just see how that fits onto this front housing. Oops. Yeah, just 
careful, <laughs> careful there not to damage it as I put it on. But you can see that fits on quite nicely. Uh, you can see the daylight through uh, to show that the holes line up. And if I hold that together nice and tight, that is nice and clear of the back plate. In fact, you can see, uh, probably not on the camera, but you can see that's clear of the back plate. So, there we have it. Um, that's how I make a gasket for, uh, for the engines on a rebuild that need it. And uh, often, uh, you know, you get engines with uh, manifolds that don't have gaskets. Um, just as good, this stick car uh, is just as good for, uh, for manifolds as it is for your, your engine crankcases. So, good luck and, uh, and stick with it and let me know how you get on.